Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at SciTechCulture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined by my good friend and colleague Steve Kern. How are we today, Steve? Off again for a couple of weeks, but we're back and ready to get into it again. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. Hello, everyone. I've been out there airbnb myself, so uh, I think we've got a similar share economy <laughs> discussion today but <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely well there's i guess um it's kind of the wild west isn't it this uh this whole concept it's it's so new um that you know there's a lot of obvious benefits to it um and obviously interesting places to explore both as a renter and a um i guess an executor of or provider of um a service um and this idea of people auctioning off i guess their spare time to um you know make some more income with some of the assets that they've got available to them um but the one in particular obviously that we're going to talk about is uber which i i, I correct me if i'm wrong i think it would if it's not the first it would have been one of the first um sort of uh, shared services type things that sort of really relied on uh, private individuals to um, uh, utilize their um, uh, own resources, in this case cars, um, yeah. to provide a service to the public. Um, and uh, it's an interesting idea. It's an interesting concept. And um, I guess, uh, you know, I'm not sure who came up, came up with the idea, but um, oh, it's probably that dodgy CEO that we'll talk about <laughs> later. But um, Uber is an interesting thing. I, I mean, conceptually, I, I, like I kind of find it an interesting um, idea, but I never got into it because at the end of the day, there's a, and we'll talk about this London story in a minute, but it's the idea of, um, how are they regulated? Um, how are they? Um, how are people being responsible with it? You're really trusting that you know the Uber driver you get that you know um, the, the closest one you get is going to do what they're supposed to do. Um, there's all that aspect to it, and that's the wild west aspect to it. And as uh, as I just alluded to there in London a couple of weeks ago, there was a story about Uber being de deemed unfit to. Um, run a taxi mm. service and stripped of its license to operate um, in London uh, for a lack of corporate responsibility. Now, that, very interesting stuff. And, um, you know, uh, you know, the L London's mayor got into it. He, they just, you know, the, they specifically were saying that um, uh, Uber's approach and conduct demonstrated a lack of corporate responsibility in a in relation to a number of issues which have potential public safety and security implications. Yeah. Which um so i mean if if uber were to be regulated in that way how really how different would they be from just being t you know a normal taxi really well yeah. that's that's absolutely correct i mm. mean it it's interesting i don't know how i feel about the government regulating against uber you would think that if uber wasn't up to standard let the people decide free mm. market economy um, yet having said that, I think we're seeing increasingly now, you know, people don't seem to care much about what Facebook, Google or anyone else is putting up. They just consume it, take it and accept it. So maybe there is a role for government, maybe there isn't. I think that's one of the big debates probably over the next decade. Yeah. Um, so yes, I, I, I don't know. I remember with a group of friends in 2008, we just got Twitter and we needed a ride home. So we tweeted out to the Twitterverse, anyone driving past, you know, West Terrace, can you give us a lift? Of course, we got no one. Someone came up with Uber uh, and basically made an app that would make that happen. And I like the idea of the sharing and I like the idea that theoretically anyone can come and pick you up. What I don't actually like is the way Uber regulates it I guess. Really, mm. uh, I'm, I think you could probably do the same thing on something like Airtasker. Obviously, I could be a serial killer that comes to pick you up, but then so could the Uber driver, I guess, within reason. Yeah. Uh, there's an, always a digital trail, so I don't know uh, what the Uber regulation really makes better. But there's nothing really, just to pick up your point, that that's sort of an extreme example, you know, the serial killer in the Uber um, coming that's to pick up their victims. I mean, um, even, if they were, even if they wanted to do it as a one-off, I mean, there's nothing really in at the moment that could stop that, 
uh, really. Um, I mean, you could argue too that you know that could be the same if you got into a taxi as well. But well, um, yeah. but taxis are uh, a lot more heavily regulated, and I guess there's the concept that taxi drivers are a profession, and they have. Um, I don't know, a sense of uh, ego and uh, passion about it that they deliver a, a certain service to a certain standard, whereas an Uber driver really doesn't have that basis. Oh, look, I certainly agree with you there and I certainly agree with that in terms of the London uh, black cab services. Mm. Not so sure that applies in Australia. Yeah. Maybe it applies in some some cities in America where the, where the cabbies could be very proud of their city and the, and the role they play. And I think... There's something in that. There's something about people who are professional as opposed to people that are just sort of amateur ride-sharing going the same way. Yeah. Um, but uh, certainly in Australia, I think that's why Uber has been quite popular is because they're up against a, a very disparate sort of group of people that are sort of amalgamated together as a taxi service. But, you know, if anything, the competition has made probably the uh, taxi services in, in Australia better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what a, uh, maybe we take the regulation approach now. The the idea of public safety and security um, is it because Uber and say um, any other type of service you know you could put in Airbnb, um, anything else like that, that where a private individual is offering their service or um, or and or resource to another private individual uh, for their entertainment, use, whatever, uh, transport, whatever, that there um, should be some mechanism in place to hold um, the provider of that service or, um, or whatever uh, to account uh, for the other, for the, the, I guess the renters or, or the uh, user's um, safety and how do you how do you justify that? I guess that's where you know you're saying, oh, well, if you've got government regulation, that's that's not good. But how else could you do it? The only reason the government ever regulates is to make money. They mm. uh, used to be able to uh, pre disruption regulate the taxi service uh, and make a lot of money out of it. They're now faced with disruption that yeah. threatens that that money. So of course, what's the only thing you can do is force regulation upon Uber so the government can take a cut. You know, um, people get into cars with friends all the time. You know, is the car roadworthy? I don't know. You know, there's all sorts of things that come from this. I I think everybody who, who pays for a service, whatever that service is, has the right to be protected in regard to receiving the service that they purchased. Yeah. However, I think, you know, this, this idea of regulation and Uber and all this sort of stuff, you know, and safety and all this sort of stuff, I, I don't really believe it myself. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I really just don't think it achieves very much. 95% of the people who do Uber, the drivers themselves, are genuine, honest people. You know, that 5% you'll find in Uber who, do, who aren't, yeah. Are the same five percent that are working in the taxi service who aren't, you yeah. know, and they're the same five percent of people in the general population who take their friends for rides in unroadworthy cars while they're on drugs or alcohol or something else. So, mm. like, you know, but no one wants to know those statistics. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, just finally, I just wanted to just touch on um, uh, my own personal feeling towards it. Um, Uber never really sort of caught my imagination like i think we were just saying before you got on i know a lot of people who swear by it and yeah. uh, happy to use it all the time and um i just um i've got this aversion to it for some reason i don't quite know what it is um there i mean i could maybe i don't know maybe i just have to try it or something i don't know but um it, it's just something about the it, it seems like a fast and loose operation and uh when and for me, conceptually, I'm not going to pay for a fast and loose operation that isn't, um, you know, uh, going to, you know, and I know this is sort of a perception as opposed to a reality that because of that, I feel like it's not actually going to deliver what, um, you know, it's supposed to, if that makes sense. Yeah, my observation on that would be it's actually fast and loose, I think, at the top. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, and I'm not a big fan of Uber generally, Mm. Uh, because I don't think it's particularly groundbreaking. Is is you know it's just just another taxi service. 
but I have found that the drivers really aspire to adhering to the Uber standards. And because of that, they've improved the service. So even though I, you know, I couldn't really care what whether I'm in a taxi or an Uber, I must say the Ubers I've caught, the cars are very clean, the drivers are actually quite friendly and, uh, you know, easy going and they're there just trying to do their best to make a bit of extra money. So, I mean, at, at the sharing end of the economy, I love it. You know, maybe it's the, the whole Uber structure that I'm not that fond of. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Steve, we might uh, wrap it up there. Um, so uh, don't forget to uh, check out our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and uh, content there and subscribe to all our channels, YouTube, Vimeo, etc. So hope you enjoy all of that content and uh, we'll always uh, endeavor to keep providing more and more as we go along. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>